Good evening, everyone. My name is Yapchin, and I will be your host for tonight. On behalf of the JPO family, we'd like to extend a warm welcome to everyone tuning in for tonight's broadcast. We hope that everyone is doing well and, say, uh, and staying safe indoors. A friendly reminder to maintain good hygiene at all times and maintain social distancing when heading out. As you'd like to continue improving your experience with us, please help us achieve this by completing the poll that will be published during the broadcast. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the Q&A section down below. To anyone who is interested in sharing tonight's broadcast, a live feed will be shared on the Facebook uh, on the JPO Facebook page and a recording of the webinar will also be uploaded on the page. Tonight's seminar features Mr. Fernando Rojas Wespe with his topic being my musical journey from a beginner to a professional musician. As our JPO family attendees are mostly students ranging from primary school to college, their parents and their teachers, the sharing of knowledge and advice you have for all of us is invaluable and greatly appreciated. Now on to Mr. Fernando's biography. Fernando Rojas Wespe first studied at the age six with Odina Lestiani and Sebastian Massi. In 2011, he continued his studies at the Rubin Academy of Music and Dance of Jerusalem with Maestro Roy Shiloh. In 2014, he enrolled at the Bushman Mehta School of Music, a part of the Faculty of Arts at Tel Aviv University operating in collaboration with the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra, IPO, where he studied with Ilya Konovalov, Irina Zvetlova, and Ludmila Feldman. Fernando Rojas Wespe initiated his professional career at the age of 10 in the Children's Chamber Orchestra of the Libertator Theatre of Gordabo. At age 12, he performed as a leader of second violin for the National University of Cordoba, uh, Cordoba's Symphonic Orchestra. He has been concertino for, of both the Guanarias Chamber Orchestra and the Provincial Orchestra of Citizen Music of Cordoba and has performed in several ensembles and orchestras such as the Camerata Argentina, Camerata Bariloche, the National Symphony Orchestra of Argentina, and many more. At the present time, he is a permanent member of an opera orchestra, Buenos Aires uh, Estable Orchestra of the Teatro Colón. Mr. Rojas Oeste has also formed chamber groups in collaboration with pianist Santiago Rojas Oeste. Uh, such as the Rojas Wespe Duo and the Rojas Wespe Maltz Trio, featuring IPO Chalice and Rick Maltz. His soloist career includes national and international collaborations with the National University of Tucumán's Symphony Orchestra, the Chaco Symphony Orchestra, the National University of Villa Maria's Chamber Orchestra, and so on. He has been a violin faculty of, uh, in Coroba, Cordoba University of Arts and has taught master classes in Mexico, Peru, Colombia, Argentina, and Spain. Fernando won his first award at the age of 12, winning first place in the 2002 uh, Concertino Contest, Argentina under the violin soloist category. In 2011, he was rewarded the National Scholarship of the National Arts Fund in Argentina as well as the FNA Tango Prize. His acknowledgments include honors and recognitions from the Mexico City Chamber Orchestra, the Cordoba Rotary Club, the Argentina National Congress, the Argentine National Secretariat of Culture, the Guancayo Town Hall and the Ole Ranana Prize of the Americas in Israel Honor Diploma. Now let us welcome Mr. Fernando. Hi, Mr. Fernando. 
Hello, Mr. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is yes. a pleasure to be part of this uh, interview series. I, I want to say thank you very much to Ling Yap, who invited me. Uh, I want to say it was a surprise when I received the invitation, the, the email the first time. So I'm glad to be here and to share with, with you uh, my, my little experience on, on this uh, music world. So uh, thank you again. I will be happy to to speak with you and all the person who are watching this interview, feel free to make a uh, question. Yes, we're very honored to have you. So um, could you tell us a little bit about the video we have just watched from the beginning? Well, uh, yes, um, it was um, a chamber music group. We played the, the truth of Schubert. And it was a very special concert for um, two things. One of them, uh, after, you know, this pandemic, this coronavirus, mm -hmm. uh, it, it made very difficult situation to play concert with public. So after almost, yeah, one, one year, we would play uh, the concert. Uh, it was the first chamber music concert uh, we play in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And it was also special because uh, the day of the concert was my birthday. So it, it was uh. like a very nice celebration for me, uh, play with friends and uh, play music. And, you know, after this, uh, this uh, standby for uh, calling, uh, how to say, you know, after the stop, almost I think the, the world stopped after this this coronavirus. No, so yes. uh, was was like a dream. Uh, be sitting there playing music uh, with uh, with public there. Um, was so yes yes. Um, so was this concert? Was this recording um, recent or when was it recorded? It it, it was February. Uh, 28 uh, this year uh, so ah. it's just a few months only but uh, now we are again locked down the city for for the I country see. for a few days so you know um, you never know what's gonna happen uh, for that it was like a uh, um, how to say a, a bless when you can play a concert now yeah yes <laughs> i see <laughs> okay um so what made you choose violin why the instrument violin uh well uh, after after to to cross to this part i forgot something important uh, about the video we show we see mm -hmm. uh it was in the auditorium national uh, in buenos aires uh, mm -hmm. it is a, a, a beautiful um auditorium uh, like uh, it's 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 very special because they it was the old um, central post, you know, from Argentina. Mm -hmm. So uh, they were not using more the building. So the the government decided to make a, an auditorium there. And what so was uh, very important for for musicians here because we have the the famous Teatro Colón, uh, mm -hmm. but you know this is a opera opera teatro. Is for opera oh, yeah. principally of course all the orchestras are going there to play concert but mm -hmm. it is very important to have an auditorium so it also it was a um it, it was very comfortable to play there because uh, mm -hmm. it's it, acoustic is different and and also the the auditorium and it's very important to 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 have it so i, I forgot to to mention this so now I, I, I can cross <laughs> uh, <laughs> why um, I choose the violin. Well, mm -hmm. uh, it, it is uh, very, very funny because um, my, my brother, uh, who mm -hmm. you saw in the video playing piano, uh -huh. it, uh, he uh, started uh, before that I started with the violin. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, it happened because uh, um, my mother, uh, she, uh, she's a doctor, but uh, when uh, she was young, uh, 
she was playing piano. She, she studied in the conservatory piano and he finished the career. But then uh, she she went to, uh, for uh, for the medicine, like uh, as a doctor. So mm -hmm. the piano was here at home. Uh, and I remember when we were a child, uh, she was asking us, uh, do you want to play piano? And we say no. And also my brother say no, no, no. Like this for a few years. But uh, we were around, I, I don't know, maybe five, uh, six years. Uh, so the, the, the piano was covered, full cover, oh. because uh, we were playing around the house. And uh, <sighs> we, my mother wasn't, um, he didn't want to, you know, uh, scratch the, the piano because we were running around the piano and using, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to play. Mm -hmm. So uh, then, uh, one day my brother says, I want to play piano. So, okay, say my man, let's go. And here in Cordoba, we have the Suzuki method. So mm -hmm. uh, my brother start first with uh, playing piano, studying piano. And uh, I was going every lesson because uh, my mom and my father were working. And when my mom finished uh, her work, she... Mm -hmm. She uh, pick up us uh, to go to the Suzuki. Mm. So we were there. I was uh, watching and listening all the all the lessons, and uh, it happened like I, I don't remember exactly, but after one year or something like that, a few months, uh, I say I want to play. I want to play piano, and the teacher of my brother said, No, no, you you will not play piano because two uh, pianists in the family cannot be possible. So you must <laughs> choose the other instrument. So I, I was walking around the, the school and I saw behind a window uh, um, a teacher uh, teaching violin. I said, okay, I want to play that instrument. I want to play violin. So mm -hmm. it started uh, like this. And I'm so happy, you know, because uh, um, once I, I have a difficult time with the violin at the beginning because I was six years old, and mm -hmm. you know I, I I didn't I didn't want to practice. I think oh. it's a normal situation. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't want to I didn't want to practice. Uh, so uh, you know the uh, Suzuki uh, philosophy says like if the children doesn't play uh, in the lesson the father or the mother mm -hmm. had to play. So my mom was taking the lesson by me. So <laughs> uh, until one day she says uh, to my, my first teacher, sorry, Odina, uh, I, I, will not, uh, I will not bring her more to the violin lesson because it cannot, cannot be possible. I'm working all the day and I, I, I come here and I have to play the violin. <laughs> so I, so, uh, and, uh, Odina says, okay, don't worry. Uh, let's take 15 days free and we'll see what's happened. Okay, I, so mm -hmm. I took a two or three weeks, uh, no music, no playing, and then I, I returned with the violin and I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it today. So uh, and my first teacher was very important to me because, <clears throat> uh, you know, she was supporting me a lot. Uh, so... I, I, uh, I, my concentration was not full when I was uh, a child mm. because, uh, you know, I, I was very energetic, so it uh, <laughs> was very tricky. So, but uh, uh, it was a beautiful year uh, spending there and, you know, music is like a family. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I love the music world. Yeah. You see. So what age did you start learning the violin and why? Well, um, uh, the, the, first, uh, the first steps was uh, very important because um, my first teacher was very, very clear uh, with mm -hmm. me. So I started with, uh, I was six and she pushed me from the beginning to, I say, I can say we, we have uh, we have luck 
uh, a lucky career here uh, because Cordoba mm -hmm. is the second city of the country and mm -hmm. uh, you you don't have to move a lot around the city to to go to a place no to to for example to go to the university to study <clears throat> we are mm -hmm. the distance are close so <clears throat> you have more time to spend uh, on your career is I am doing this because uh, if I compare with Buenos Aires, distance are very huge. So you spend a lot of time traveling to to go one place to other place. <clears throat> so when I was here, uh, almost every lesson we were walking uh, to the to the university because the the Suzuki method was uh, de developing in the university. So we were walking there and it, it was a beautiful because uh, you can see the trees the you know the gardens um mm -hmm. you 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 feel like in in, in different atmosphere you know? mm, uh, yeah. so i i was there uh, after three four years when i was uh, 10 or so maybe 11 uh, here in cordoba exists in that moment the the children the chamber orchestra but uh, we were uh, about uh, from I, I don't remember exactly but to nine to 15 or 14 years old all the members mm -hmm. and the conductor was uh, very important because uh, he was a very uh, a person with a lot of experience because he, he, he was conducting the, the orchestra of the city, and then he was conducting the youth orchestra and the children orchestra. So when I, after a few years with my first teacher, with Odina, uh, she told me, okay, now you are going to do the audition for the, for the children orchestra of the Teatro del Libertador. Mm. So first uh, start my, my brother, Santiago, uh, he 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 went uh, first to the orchestra because uh, he was older than me. So he spent one one year in the in the orchestra in the mm -hmm. chamber orchestra more than me. Then mm -hmm. I I I did audition, and it it was very important to me because the things I learned there, I can say uh, till today I'm 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 using these things because. That, that is the way to 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 work no and you know he was the conductor was very strict no at, at the time of of uh, play music in the orchestra we were yeah. all child but uh, we were focused on it so mm -hmm. uh, they give me the first element to like you know the first element or the first step uh, after go for a youth orchestra or professional orchestra I so see. it was very clear from the beginning and for that reason i i, I think i feel uh, lucky lucky when i when i was uh, playing there unfortunately it was a short period it was one year and something because the conductor then uh, had a health problem and he passed on he died uh, but uh, we uh. we miss we miss a lot him um after this situation um well my 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 teacher odina in that moment told me don't worry we have other orchestras here so you you can continue uh with uh, your you know orchestra studies uh mm -hmm. um after a few months i did audition for the uh orchestra of the Universidad Nacional de Córdoba, University National of Córdoba. Okay. They, they, they had an orchestra there and, and was also funny because I was a, a child there because I, I was 13 years old and all oh, there yeah. was, and I don't remember, 20, 30 years old. So, you know, they, they, yeah. uh, they treat me like a kindergarten. No? I was there, okay, don't do this, don't do this. Okay. So, but it was a uh, was amazing. I can say I I I feel very grateful to the life to for this opportunity. Mm. I see. Um, I'm very curious because if. 
for me, if I learn violin at the age of six years old, I cannot really concentrate. How can your teacher, or or didn't know is it? Yeah, can how can she be so persistent with you? Like, did she really make time with you? Like a lot of time with you, or how? Well, I I think she she always was uh, trying to find new things to me, you know, to to keep my brain uh, concentrated. Because uh, maybe I, I was playing the violin, but but I was looking behind the window to see what was on <laughs> outside, you know. So yeah. she was telling me, Fernando, please concentrate here, please, please. Uh, I can say also a few lessons. For my teacher was crying because I I, I was uh, <laughs> I was moving a lot around the the, the room, but. Uh, uh, till today, she she remember uh, we we continue in, in touch in contact with her, and she now she can smile from this situation. But at the moment, it wasn't funny, <laughs> and mm -hmm. my mom was there, my, my father also. But um, uh, that it's a uh, way very important to me. Uh, one thing is play when you, when you find an artist playing the violin. Or other thing is a, a, a teacher. No, because that mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that if you play like a virtuoso violin, you will teach well. No, it's for me are different different ways. Uh, so it's very important to find a pedagogy uh, the, of a teacher. Ah, I see. Yes. So because if not, uh, uh, I don't know. I uh, I don't want to say a name, but. Uh, you know, you can find a very virtuosic violinist, and it doesn't mean like he will be an amazing teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. So, um, would you like to talk about the violinists you met when studying abroad? Oh, yeah, of course. Well, we we I think we saw some pictures. Yes, I, I saw in... the one with Pinka Zuckerman and with Isa <laughs> Poman. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, it it was an amazing part of of my studies because uh, first I, I well it it is a, a mix of things because when when I when I went to study abroad first time I went to 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 Israel to Jerusalem uh, uh, it became because uh, I have uh, now we are very 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 good friends. Uh, he pushed me when I was 18. I, I was working in professional orchestra now uh, here in Argentina, but I feel that uh, wasn't wasn't happy because uh, that if that if you are working in in professional orchestra doesn't mean like uh, you know. Well, for me it's not like uh, the roof. It's like uh, I need something else. So. I was I, I was playing here in Cordoba and say okay, uh, we finish. I, I had a period playing tango. It's uh, our music here in Argentina. Mm -hmm. So I was many years working there. In uh, it was a professional orchestra also in, in our theater here. Then I, I was uh, I was traveling uh, to other city here, and I I met a musician, and uh, he told me you know. In two or three months, we will have audition in the National Symphony, I think, in Buenos mm -hmm. Aires. Uh, maybe it will be a good opportunity if you go there to, to do the audition. So I prepared the audition. I went there. Uh, we were in that moment many, many participants of, of it. So I, 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 I won a place there, and I moved to Buenos Aires. It, it was a... a 12, 13, I think, year. Um, mm, mm. I was working there uh, one year, one year and a half, and then uh, came because my first time was in Israel was two years before. Uh, I mm -hmm. went to Israel. I studied very short period. I had a problem uh, here, a family problem here in Argentina, so I moved, I moved uh, back to Argentina. Then. I won the position in Buenos Aires, so I was there. And in one of the tours of the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra came the, the cellist Enrique Maltz. Uh, we met in Buenos Aires. 
and he told me, why you stop your studies? Uh, you must to finish it in, in, in Israel, no? So I say, okay. But he told me, uh, this time we can both of you, your brother and you. So you will be together in the in the university, you know. So we applied for the scholarships. Um, we were very lucky. We 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 had it. So we moved to to Israel, and it it was when I spent almost uh, three years and a half there, and it was an amazing period because I think if I today it will be very complicated to do it. You know, because all this situation, we never imagined it will happen. So we, I, I was there with my brother and the academy was fantastic because the Bookman met the School of Music, you know, it depends also in cooperation with the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, they give us the opportunity to have a, a car from the orchestra to see the concert. We pay like, uh, Today is like nothing. Or I think it was, it's, uh, I don't I don't remember exactly, but it was very cheap, uh, like a membership. Uh, membership. Mm -hmm. So we, we pay once, and we had the opportunity to assist to all the concerts. But all the time we were uh, we were there, we can see everything. So I was almost uh, watching every rehearsal of the Philharmonic, and. It was amazing because uh, I had the opportunity to see the violinist working with the orchestra and then the performance. So, and after after that, uh, during the rehearsal sometimes, uh, I had the opportunity to speak with, with them. Uh, and also they were uh, going to the academy to give master class, but uh, it's different context because uh, in the master class uh, they are you know focused on the master class so and it it was amazing we are we are uh, uh, watching now the pink and uh, pink and Superman pictures so yeah. I was uh, talking with him in a corridor you know in the mm -hmm. Israeli Philharmonic Orchestra and we were talking mm -hmm. uh, quite uh, like a half an hour about violin technique uh, mm -hmm. he showed me how he he takes the the bows and he mm -hmm. he comment me why I, or, or for me it was amazing because uh, he he is one of my favorite violins player. Oh yes. So had had this opportunity. Uh, I think it's not uh, in every corner. No, it's, it's not like you are going to the street and you find no. Maybe if you are in, in United States, you know, <laughs> yeah. in, in the same town. But uh, it, it was amazing. It was amazing. Also, conductors, uh, Mitch and Maestro, uh, Subimeta, mm -hmm. uh, it's a legendary. You know? mm -hmm. It's like, a, you know, it's a permanent. So that it was an amazing period. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, of course, Buenos Aires has a, a lot of activity. Teatro Colón is famous, all the uh, violinist conductor, famous conductor, violinist. Uh, Pianists, uh, different, you know, are coming. But it's there in Israel was like every week one different. Yes. So uh, you know, it, I, I I had the opportunity to meet uh, uh, Leonidas Cavacos, um, Zuckerman, Joshua Bell, uh, Gil Shahan, um, mm. uh, pianist Jeff Brosman, Murray Peraya, uh, and many more. I can I cannot remember now the, the names. Uh, also with uh, Cavacos was was a, a, a fun meeting because he's a close friend uh, of a of a musician there. So I I, I was mm -hmm. with with this uh, cellist with Enrique. I I, I I was there in in Tel Aviv watching the rehearsal. I was talking with Enrique and came to ask uh, Cavacos. Of course, they, they each eat other because they were studying in the same university in the United States. I say, hello, Enrique, uh, how long time? I, I didn't see you, blah, blah, blah. I say, okay, let's go to eat something. I was there, so, so okay, I say, goodbye. No, 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 he said, you, you can come uh, to, to eat with that. So I, I, I turn, I say to Enrique, 
I'm shy. I, I don't. I don't want to to be there because uh, you know, with with Calvacos, what can I say? So say mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Can we just to eat? So I was sitting on the table with uh, Leonidas Cavacos in front of me. Mm -hmm. My friend, the cellist, we can see in the picture, Rick and Matt. Oh, yeah. And uh, other musicians of the Philharmonic. We were there. Okay, I was like this, no? Because I, I couldn't, I, I, I cannot believe, I, I was thinking, I cannot believe I was sitting with, with uh, Leonidas Cavacos here. Yeah. So, uh, we were eating. Uh, so I was thinking, I, I, I must to, to ask some, some important I, I can learn from it, no? Yes. So I say, Maestro. Uh, I want to ask you, what is the first thing you are doing when you, you, we, when you study violin, when you practice? And he looked at me and he smiled and said, I tune the violin. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I laughed, no? He, he was uh, very, very funny. But uh, of course, uh, he understood that I, I, I was talking about, uh, you know, warming up how he was warming up the, mm -hmm. uh, on the violin. So, but it was one of the, of the funny stories uh, to be there, uh, being there. So, and then of course, uh, other violins I met uh, was very important to me was Julian Rasklin. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a former student of uh, also Zuckerman. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it was amazing, but because I, I could take a, a a long lesson with with him, so uh, I was only interested in, in, in the sound. He he uh, plays amazing the violin, but I had very interest in, in the in the in, in his sound. So he he gave me a lesson, full lesson, only about the bow technique, sound sound. I I, I remember I was doing a long long notes, and mm -hmm. when we finish after one hour something like that. Uh, he told me, okay, I think it was very boring, no? I said, no, for, I, I, I was excited because I said, for, for me, it was, uh, was an amazing, amazing because I, I really want to, to know this. Yeah. I, I really want to know if he was like, oh, maybe it was a boring lesson I have given my, on my life, <laughs> but it was not. Mm, I see. Okay. Um. When were you uh, there in Tel Aviv, and how long were you there? Well, I, I spent almost uh, uh, three years because I started the studies. Um, then I moved to the other program in the university, so I finished my uh, art diploma there. So it um, was almost three years and a half. Then during the time when I finished the studies, I was traveling around Europe and coming back to it two years well. I really feel it's really like a like a home, no? Uh, because I spend time there, I make a very good friends. Um, you know, they are very open, open brain. So mm -hmm. we were in an international music program. Um, you know, all, all, all the cult cultures. Uh, this is one of the important uh, part of the music because I don't know, you can speak Russian, German, uh, say Japanese, but mm -hmm. at the, when we, we sit there uh, to play music, we are speaking all the same language. So mm. this, is, this is amazing. Uh, so also, I was working there. Uh, I had the opportunity to, to win an audition. Um, <clears throat> Uh, in the in one important orchestra, I I I, I you know I, I had the opportunity to work uh, with Israel Chamber Orchestra. Also, I learned a lot. It's completely different. Uh, I I can say when I was there time because uh, of uh, Buxman met the School of Music. His approach, of course, they they teach you how to play violin if you want to be a soloist. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you want, but. The principal focus is uh, 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 orchestra, you know, uh, how, mm -hmm. how to develop you as a professional musician uh, playing in an orchestra. So it, there, being there is when I learn how to play in an orchestra. 
it was very important to me because it's, uh, sometimes we we have the the wrong concept. So, um, you know, sitting in an orchestra, you can you can you can be a virtuosic. You can play. I don't know. Uh, musician became crazy with the twenty four Capriccio of Paganini, but yeah. you know, first we we have we have Bach. Uh, I think it's the I think it's the father of or the you know uh, composer. Mm -hmm. But um, when I was sitting there, uh, I really understand how to play an orchestra. Why so so important to to see what around us, you know, our partner. Because sometimes you are sitting and you know someone wants to show that he plays more, more like a, you know more sound. Like I can play mm -hmm. it better, but it's it's not the way because uh, in orchestra uh, we, we you have the section of first violin, second violin, and viola, but it is a team. Doesn't matter if he, if uh, of course if the quality of the musician are, are are well, the the orchestra will sound better. But I mean when the the preparation uh, is completely different. Uh, mm -hmm. How to sing? You you have to sing in, inside uh, the team. You you cannot be alone. Yes. No. So it mm -hmm. was for me very important because it, it was for me like Polish. All this year I was playing before in orchestra, and when I was there, I really understand how to do it. Uh, mm. Yeah, and I had the opportunity, I, as, as I told you, to play in Israel Chamber Orchestra, Tel Aviv Solo mm -hmm. East, um, Bergeva Sinfonieta. I, I was working there as a uh, second violin assistant. So, uh, it's uh, also works in small groups, make you um, give you the, the best. You must to give the best when you are playing in small chamber groups. Because uh, I remember, I, I was very stressful when I was playing the Israel Chamber Orchestra because we were only five first violin. Oh, yeah. So I remember one situation, something happened with the control master assistant. And mm -hmm. I was sitting I was sitting behind. Yeah. Because I uh, I remember the the control master turn and say, Come here, sit sit here. So I was like this, no? Then uh, the first man because uh, uh you know uh, it's uh, everything the conductor was uh, listening every note, and also the control master was very strict. So, <laughs> you know, you are, you in that moment you are afraid to make uh, some mistake. Mm -hmm. you, know, you you want to give the best, but uh, also it's like uh, we are watching you. Yeah. So, but it was very interesting. All the all the all the situation, all the opportunity to work with them. Uh, I, I learned a lot also from the rehearsals when I was watching this Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. Uh, was like a pleasure, no? It's it's like when you when you really understand how to work. Uh, mm. because uh one thing is, is playing a symphony, other thing is, is uh, you know when you have a solo playing with the orchestra. Uh, we have a lot of formats, but that that uh, that's the way to learn. It's like you have mm. a chip inside your 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 head, and you know you you have to to run it at different occasions, different concerts, different situations. You have to be prepared for everything. Yeah, mm, I yeah, see. Yeah. Okay, so before we move on, um, just a reminder to all our viewers and listeners: please feel free to ask Mr. Fernando any questions. Just type them down on the Q and A chat box yes just type them in he will be very happy to answer you live later dur uh, during the q a session okay so uh mr fernando as you may have heard the jesselton philharmonic orchestra has involved itself in variety of activities so on behalf of the jpo we would like to ask your views on the jpo and its activities Additionally, how would you suggest the JPO and its members um, to further improve itself? Well, I I I I um, I have to be honest. When I, I when I received the invitation to speak about the uh, Jesselton uh, Philharmonic Orchestra, I was 
so curious about it. Um, uh, again, once again, I say thank you very much to you and uh, to, for the invitation. I, I, when I, I get involved on, on the GPO, I, I can read and, and I saw the videos and, and you are doing a, a really great job because uh, it's so important for, for the children. You know, it's like you are giving a home for them. And mm -hmm. you are teaching them that uh, there is something that uh, they can do. Uh, they can they can uh, see the music first, like a you know, like a a way to 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 play. Like when you are playing with the toy, right? You are you are playing with the instrument. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's important because you are teaching them a philosophy, a life philosophy. Mm -hmm. So, yes. and I'm sure like uh, many of the members of this project you are develop, developing there they feel at home when i play in there so mm -hmm. this is for me the the one of the important things and i say bravo because i saw you have many programs running there so and also invite uh, i saw the program and they invite the former uh, instruments to play with the uh, with the orchestra and that's important because uh, sometimes uh, this kind of project doesn't exist. Of course, we, we have a lot of projects like uh, similar to the El Sistema in Venezuela, like uh, everyone is talking about. But uh, uh, I think you you are open. Uh, you open new doors, like uh, former yeah. former instruments. So that is very important. Also, I see. Uh, the, the how you seen the uh, yeah bling we, we had the conversation uh, he, his um, throat are in in quality uh, that is very important uh, because yes. I saw many many youth orchestra children orchestra playing loud 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 mm. loud they, they want to play forte but it's not forte always you you you, you quality is very important. Doesn't matter if you are playing a Beethoven symphony or you are playing, you know, uh, something very, very simple. But sometimes the simple music is a, is a, the best way to learn. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, in, in the way uh, GPO is doing the, the things are fantastic. Always, I, I, I can say for me, uh, I prefer quality, always. I, I will mm. see the quality. Um, it's very important to to teach a discipline where when people is playing there. Of course, you you during the rehearsal you can make jokes, but there is a moment yeah. that is just just a concentration and no no jokes and just just uh, you know be there because mm. uh, there it's very important when you when you spend this time uh, you know focus and concentrate and uh, be serious you know yeah. that doesn't mean like you are you must to be serious all, mm -hmm. you know all, all the time but I, I mean the moment i remember when i was a child when i comment i was work um playing here in the children chamber orchestra the conductor was very strict with that and yeah. especially with me i remember one I had a friend, a very, very close friend called Alejandro. We started playing violin together mm -hmm. and we were making always jokes, you know, but terrible jokes. Once I remember, um, we, we were in the rehearsal uh, room and we, we, we shut down the light, you know, of the room. Mm -hmm. So all the, nobody can see where we were, you know, it was the, the, the room. And I remember was the conductor was very tough with us. Of course, I, mm. I, we cannot do this kind of thing. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in that moment, I learned. I learned from him uh, how important was discipline. Uh, also, mm. I remember once I, I didn't I didn't uh, practice the music. So mm. I remember him with the baton. He said, yeah. "Fernando, play the music, please." And uh, you know, I was like, "Sorry, maestro, you didn't, you didn't practice the music." No, 
I start to cry because uh, when uh, he was, uh, um, you know, uh, um, uh, an authority when we was when he was, uh, you know, front of us with the baton. Mm-hmm. Nobody was. Uh, everybody was, uh, you know, quiet and silent. Yes. So yes. when he started, you know, with the baton, like uh, you know, like uh, mm-hmm. yes, he, like uh, you know, shorting, <laughs> you, know, da, 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 you play the machine. So I was, uh, you know, completely afraid. Uh, I started to cry. I said, "Okay, go uh... right here. You go at home, and you have your brother that uh, he's a very good pianist, and he will uh, he he will help you to." To, to practice the, the music. Mm. So also what I can say for the member of GPO is practice, practice, practice the music because it's very important the work we, we are doing before. No, no, yes. uh, no, no when we are sitting there, that's not the, the, the moment of practice the instrument. The moment of practice is at home and you are sitting in the orchestra to play together. But mm. it's not the, um, the moment to, you know, to, to learn the music there. Of course, you can, yes. you can read once, but then at home it's very important. Practice every day, every mm-hmm. day, because it will be make easier uh, for Master Yin Yak at the time of conductive. <laughs> I see. So thank you. Thank you for your answers. Okay. So now let's go to the Q&A. Okay, so um, before we go to the Q&A, actually there's a person from um, YouTube, uh, Fabio Kesma. Yeah, he said, bravo, dear Fernando, enjoy listening to your story. Yes. Okay, oh, so... Uh, the... Well, uh, if... yeah, yeah uh, sorry. <laughs> well, yes, uh, any, any, thank do you, you want to thank say... You so yeah, yeah, you, okay. can, you can read all this. Okay, so um, the first question. Hi, do you have a favorite violin piece uh, that you'd like to perform in the near future? Who is your favorite composer? Oh, well, it's a, it's a difficult one. But uh, I, I can say that I feel uh, uh, with, with Bach, with sonatas and partitas, especially with maybe with mm. the Chacon. Uh, I, I feel see. very, very special because you know Bach mm-hmm. was composing uh, for God. I don't know if everybody, everybody believe in God or you believe in something. So mm. um, when I play Bach, I feel a connection first with the instrument because mm-hmm. Bach for me teach me that every finger was to be in, in in a place and sound and that's very important for me. Also, I I. I I can say I play I answer in the other question I I play uh, I start in warming up sometimes with a four scales uh, different techniques Ruggiero Ricci books I use also but uh, very important for me playing Bach you know yeah oh, that is here yeah. <laughs> wow so for for me it's, it's this is it's, it's like a Bible because. Uh, is putting everything in your place, intonation, uh, bow technique, uh, fixing uh, both hands. So for me, that is, is really, really important. Of course, you, you, I can suggest, uh, you know, uh, a way to, to practice, but, but in a way, you, you after you, you study uh, with different teacher, you you must be your own teacher, and you have to find yes. the best way it's worked for for you. So uh, for me, what is working is scales, thirds, octaves, and then back and some uh, uh, Ruggiero Ricci exercise. Of course, mm-hmm. uh, back very important, and also mm-hmm. I'm, I'm taking sometimes the twenty four Caprice of Paganini. I'm not playing them because. Uh, you know, it's very, very difficult to play in, on, yes. on a concert, but I use them uh, to take as technique. So sometimes mm. I, I'm playing short, short passage of the, you know, one of the Caprice, because I want mm-hmm. to prove, I don't know, Saltelato, well, so I play number one, 
if I can uh, improve my octaves, I go to the Caprice, uh, you know, 17, something like something, you know, looking, uh, searching for a small passage. So what I, what I want to improve. I see. Okay, uh, I have a question for you. So it was mentioned in your bio that you have tons of experience with orchestra and even ensembles. So I'm curious to know, do you have to audition for it? Um, I'm, I mean, you did audition, but yeah, yeah. how did you like prepare and build for the audition? Well, when I prepare an audition, I can say that this is a crazy, crazy time. And <laughs> or, or also if I want, I am with my family, with my mom or my, my girlfriend, you know, I prefer to be alone sometimes because mm -hmm. uh, I, I get very stressful. I, I think everyone <laughs> that I, I, I would, audition, I, I can say, is the, I think it's the very tough part of our career as musicians because it's a moment that you have to, to show maybe in 10 minutes what you can do. That feels yes. horrible because sometimes maybe you had a, a bad day, you 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 wake up with the you know left leg, so you are you are going to the audition and you don't play so well, but maybe you are playing fantastic before this, and you mm -hmm. don't have the opportunity to play it again. So yeah, when when I when I <laughs> prepare an auditions, it's it's very important. What can I say is that when you prepare an audition, it's not only important the concerto you are going to play. Like, of course, maybe in professional orchestra, they ask you for in uh, Mozart violin concerto and then uh, one uh, romantic violin concerto, Brahms, Sibelius, I don't know, Mendelssohn, Beethoven. But, you know, mm -hmm. some, I, I, I saw some students that they are going to prepare auditions for professional orchestra that they uh, are doing a lot of focus on the on the concerto and that's not the important mm -hmm. thing you know of course you you must to play well but the important thing is the the orchestra excerpts because you are going to play in an orchestra you're not going to play yes. a solid okay you can mm -hmm. play a solid then but uh, it's like a, in every round you have the first round sometimes they organize different sometimes orchestral excerpts then one concerto, orchestral ensemble, other concerto. But in in each round, uh, you have to like uh, you are going in an stairs, you know, uh, making steps mm -hmm. by step. And for me, it's very important when you are doing the full audition, keep keep the level. You you cannot go down, you know. Yeah. Of course, you can have mm -hmm. a bad day, but it's like a, if you start well. Try to keep it during mm -hmm. all the audition. Like even even uh, you know going up like step like by step by step. Like um, you need to to show like you can do it. It's horrible because sometimes you know I, I was doing audition and I met with the friends we were there. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, but uh, mm -hmm. what can I say? Like uh, you need to be prepare like a uh, first mental prepare, preparation. Uh, you you mm -hmm. have to be very, very, um, how to say, um, concentrate at the time of playing. It's like you're concerned, yeah. you, you must be concentrating yourself. Doesn't matter if uh, the jury, because uh, you became afraid because the jury is there, but it's your opportunity yeah. maybe in 10 minutes to, sh to show that so, so enjoy if you are going to do audition enjoy enjoy your time there it doesn't matter what's happening on around you so just enjoy try to make music mm. feel it like a moment to make music and no a stress moment uh, you know where you have 12 person maybe watching you but uh, uh, yeah. yeah this is uh, the, the my experience okay um so we have come to the end of our broadcast so on behalf of JPO, we would like to thank you for dedicating your time and energy into this interview despite the pandemic that is happening right now. We would also like to thank everyone who has attended and supported this program. You guys have been great. 
I hope you guys got the answers you wanted. So this broadcast will be on every Wednesday and Sunday night at the same time until further notice. Now I will end the pray. Uh, I will end with prayer. Please pray in whatever faith you believe in for the COVID nineteen. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us the opportunity to come together, continue running this program at a moment like this. I want to pray for the nurses and doctors from around the world who has been constantly treating patients with COVID nineteen, and I hope people who diagnose with COVID nineteen will get better soon. Lastly, I pray for our safety and health. And may the future there be peace within. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fernando. Okay, We're very honored before, to have you as our guest. Yeah, be, before before I say goodbye, I want to again say thank you to you. Uh, thank you for this uh, beautiful interview. Thank you to Dea Lingyap for this invitation. I want to say thank you. Uh, to all the person we were watching this, and I want to say a special hello to a friend I saw now. He's watching this, Fabiol. Uh, we met in Israel. Uh, thank you so much. And I want to say it's very important. The last thing, like a reflection, uh, family. Uh, family was to be behind your your back always. So I want to say mm -hmm. thank you so, uh, for my father. We were always behind me. You know, watching what I was doing and uh, look, keep a line. So very important for all all the person who are watching this. Always keep a line, and I feel very grateful to to the person who are around me. Thank you so much, and again. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you. So see you guys next time. Um, 